guys, happy St. Patrick's Day. So before we get started, I just wanted to take a minute and say that um, as we are all trying to navigate the craziness of the COVID-19 outbreak um, with kids being home from school, uh, many small businesses are trying to find ways to reach out. Um, this is one of mine, so I'm really hoping that this video series will be a resource for people to use um, to either do with their kids or help their kids along um, and help them be able to create during this kind of crazy time. That being said, this is a completely new medium for me. I'm not used to making videos, so please be patient with me as I try and figure out this crazy medium and make cohesive videos for you guys. So with that being said, let's get started. So you will need And those last four are optional. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need four shapes. The first kind of looks like a guinea pig. The second, a block of cheese. The third, a baby carrot, if they were actually shaped like carrots. And the fourth is like a sort of gravy teardrop. So if you don't want to draw these shapes out on your own, I will try to link a template for these in the description of this video. So you want to lay these patterns out on your cardboard and trace them. Um, and once you get those traced, you can start cutting them. So this is definitely the step where I would recommend helping your child, especially if they're younger, because cutting cardboard can be really difficult. Oh, you can see that I just went and got grown-up scissors myself, so it can be a little bit tricky. Um, but once you get that stuff cut out, you should be okay for your kids to do the rest on their own. So these are projects that I really wanted people to be able to create with uh, just regular household objects, stuff that you'd see laying around the house that you wouldn't have to worry about going to the store for. So this is just recycled cardboard. Mine is actually an old cake round, um, but you could use old boxes, backs of sketchbooks, anything that you have that is kind of a sturdy material. So when we're painting these, we want to make sure that we use um, bright colors and a variety of colors because these are a tropical bird, though actually they kind of look like a kingfisher. I'm a huge bird nerd and so this is a kingfisher, but you can see they have kind of a giant beak just like our little tropical birds. So maybe I was a little bit inspired with the, <laughs> these colors. And definitely don't be afraid to mix colors. Uh, sometimes when you're painting on brown cardboard, I like to add a little bit of white and that helps bulk up the color. You might need to go over an area a couple times if you are still seeing some of that brown beneath it, and that is totally fine. You can see that I'm brushing over these areas really well. Whether you're doing this yourself or if you're helping your child, um, make sure you add some fun shapes. You can do some outlines, textures, patterns. This is a really great opportunity to be creative and you don't have to feel like you're wasting anything if you mess up. Because remember, there's no mistakes. You can always paint over it. Sometimes we can get so caught up in making sure that our finished product is perfect that we kind of forget to have fun along the way. So this is a very low stakes project and just remember to have fun. This is recycled cardboard, you are not wasting materials and your end product is going to look amazing. So you can see that I'm starting to add some dots in after I have finished the base layer of my body's painting. You can also see that I am filling in the wings. It kind of looks like a giant paisley. We really want to get those colors nice and bold. So remember to use all sorts of colors. You can add stripes, dots, swirls, scallops, plaid. There are so many different patterns that you can mess around with and try on your own. And I really love just using little lines to create a texture so it almost looks like I'm giving the bird feathers without outright painting them, um, but it just adds that extra little oomph to your painting. Um, and so I'm going to finish that up. Oh, adding some dots on the tail. 
and I'm just about done. So you want to use kind of a strong glue to glue these pieces together. I also glued some buttons on my wings. Sorry, it's a little bit out of frame. I didn't have a tripod, so it kind of set it up on a tiny easel, but I'm pressing everything into place and almost all set. So I had this idea after I finished the, taping the materials bit, um, but you can add a clothespin if you want it to stand up and you can just kind of paint that and that adds a nice little finishing touch for your bird. And we are done. From above, every day would seem to love zone.